Welcome back, everybody, to Caravan of Garbage, where we're looking at Mission Impossible movies and going, what's this one? It's uh, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Isn't yeah. It? And, and, and. Oh, we're doing more than that. We're doing more than answering the question, which one is that? And leave a like. Oh, okay. And that's it. Good night, everybody. <laughs> no, Mason. Oh. Because this week, of course, uh, even though my wife's away and I'm dying looking after the kids, I'm literally dying, Mason. Oh, no. Yeah, that's true. Wow. I'm going to do another big stunt this week. It'll be at the end, or I didn't. That's right. Find out. I mean, you said uh, Tom Cruise yeah. was a loser and a coward for only holding his breath for six minutes. Yep. So you said you could beat that easily. I did. <gasps> anyway, you're literally dying. So hopefully you've got a Rebecca Ferguson style character who can, <sighs> who can jumpstart your heart and then betray you. That's but then not betray you? Yeah. But then betray you again. Yeah. But then not betray you. And then we all go rogue. <laughs> Everybody goes off. Everyone, yeah, this, oh, this is. I mean, everyone goes off book, off script. They go rogue. Oh. We'll talk about it. You know what's interesting about this one? What's that? So Tom Cruise and Christopher McQuarrie they actually credit the success of the Marvel movies. Oh yes. For their decision to make this more serialized as I see. a as a franchise. Because in this one we get the debut of Solomon Lane, yeah, who is the uh, the primary villain, yeah, or at least a significant villain of this one, and then uh, the next six. one, and he goes, yeah, and then maybe seven. Yeah. Yes. Unless he died in six, I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also consider the movie The Stranger to be uh, <laughs> to be part of this. That's after Solomon Lane was soundly defeated. Yeah. He went to uh, uh, sort of semi-rural Australia and became just a real <laughs> just a real burnout guy, you know. <laughs> and other things. Yeah, yeah. And other terrible things. Other terrible things. People should check that movie out. Here's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of this that I forgotten. Mm. For example, Jeremy Renner's in this movie. That and, was the first one, yes. And he's in it, like, a lot. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about Ghost Protocol last week, mm. and we said, isn't it a shame that Jeremy Renner isn't in any more of these? And then we looked at the poster for the next one, and we're like, oh, no, he is. There what he is. is. What, is this a fan-made poster? <laughs> is this a wish list? I wish Jeremy Renner was back. No, he is back. Isn't that wild? Well, speaking of him being back, apparently Jeremy Renner still has one more Mission Impossible movie on his contract. Oh. So who knows? I'd like to see him pop up again. Yeah, I would like to see a lot of the... Uh, Just of all of them? Yeah, a lot of secondary characters that have disappeared. What about this? Avengers Endgame finale scene. It's a room full of people and it's just everybody who's ever been in this is just oh. masks off. Oh my God, yes, please. Just That's masks right. off for days. John Voight's there. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody from the original series. That's right. It's just everything. Oh, some of the characters from the video game, the <laughs> NES game, getting hit by trucks. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> wow, I was really killed there. See, thinking back on this before I went into it again, mm. I quite like this one, by the way. I think it's pretty great. I think it's pretty great also. I didn't love it at the time. No, I remember liking it. And I remember thinking, well, they did the big stunt up top, mm. which is spectacular. Yeah. I, I, we'll talk about it. But I don't really remember much else. And what I remembered most of it was the the subsequent big stunt, yeah. which is the scene where uh, Ethan has to go into the, the server room, the underwater server room, mm. much of which is sort of CGI'd out. And you know, it doesn't... Big, big, big CGI thing. arms. And, and, and apparently, uh, you know, he did a lot of underwater work for this, yeah. but it doesn't look real. No, it doesn't, yeah. Little, it was a little bit disappointing, and I think that's probably the reason that... They tried to make it like a Marvel movie. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> it's Marvel's fault. <laughs> That's right. Any any success in this, Tom and Macquarie's doing. Uh, any any failures, it's uh, Kevin it, Feige. It's Kevin Feige, <laughs> or somebody put motion smoothing on their TV. That's probably what I did, and I apologise. Yeah, but you know what I really enjoy about this movie? It exactly. really starts to build on the legend of Ethan Hunt. Mm. There's a couple of key moments. Yes. One where he meets like a junior IMF agent. She's like, "Oh my god, you're real. You're that guy that I love, or whatever." And he's That's like, right. "Yeah, maybe I am, baby." Mm. Maybe I am. Maybe I am. <laughs> Just uh, keep your eyes on this guy and uh, let your guard down. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> oh, you're dead. And the other moment is where Alec Baldwin does a speech and calls him the living manifestation of destiny. He's exactly right. <laughs> I'd tell you who was, who was doing some good face acting in this movie. It's um, both Sean Harris and Alec yep. Baldwin yep. are doing some insane, like, mm. bug-eyed rage acting behind their eye and it's great oh, I love yeah. it. very good stuff so the story in this one uh -huh. you're not going to believe it the imf is disbanding oh and that's not good because there's big terrorism happening all the time now that's right because and they're, they're the guys that stop big terrorism that's right the other guys are in the pocket of big terrorism sometimes they contribute to big terrorism something yeah it's a real it's a real roll of the <laughs> dice with these guys isn't it 
<laughs> but you know who doesn't contribute to big terrorism? Ethan Hunt. Ethan Hunt, that's right. Mm. But they think he does. Yeah. So he's got to go rogue. It's crazy because they also know that he's the living manifestation of destiny. Mm. So you think that they would remember that. Yeah, but Alec He Bald- doesn't do big terrorism. Alec Baldwin comes to that realisation later in the movie. I think that's his character arc. Oh, okay. I hate Ethan Hunt. But he's a whirlwind of chaos and he saves the world a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. And I love him. <laughs> and now I'm his boss and best friend and we go on a picnic together. Yeah. Uh, but I do love the idea of this rogue nation, like these presumed dead or missing agents mm. that have formed their own little coalition. I love it in theory and mm. I think that's perhaps one of the reasons that I didn't love it initially on the cinema release okay. because they refer to it as an anti-IMF. Right, and if you if you're gonna give us an anti IMF, you want I personally want that like similar squad trope. Yeah, okay. like you've got a computer guy and you've got a brawler and you've got a gadget guy and they come up against each other. I know that's not particularly realistic, yeah. but if you recall in the last movie we had that movable hologram hallway. Mm-hmm, so this mm-hmm. this movie franchise isn't strictly speaking about realism all the time. You want to see when they're walking towards each other like down the street and they're just locking into the doppelganger version of they're, themselves. They're lined up exactly the same way. <laughs> exactly right. And you know, Simon Pegg has form in that because he was in Shaun of the Dead and they had a That's true. They had an alternate squad, right? They really did. And that's kind of what I want. So that is a little bit disappointing, but but you know, some of them have got some chops. They've got a a, a gun in a bassoon or whatever. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I think that's a trombone. Well, okay. <laughs> I think you're probably right. <laughs> I think it's uh, upright double bass. <laughs> we know music. I uh, I love that opera sequence and the mm. way it's timed with the music. It feels like a level of Hitman. Like, yeah, it does. Which I think there is a level of Hitman, which is pretty much just this. Mm. And I love that there's a guy, and I enjoy this whenever they do it because it's so rare. I love it in movies when there's a guy as well because oftentimes <laughs> in a movie where there's no guy, yeah, what, what an empty lo- room. What are you looking at? Come on. Ridiculous. Ugh. What is this, an Andy Warhol fucking movie where it's a picture of a can of soup or whatever? Right? Yuck. Needs there to be a guy eating that soup. Then you got a movie. <laughs> it's a movie. Mm. <laughs> but I love when there's a guy comically bigger than Tom Cruise. Mm. And not just accidentally bigger. So just bigger. a normal man. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, yeah. But, you know, like, noticeably bigger because I feel like they don't lean into it a lot. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows that he's not, like, a huge guy, mm. which is fine, yeah, by yeah. the way. yeah. But just Except in when Jack Reacher came out. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that was a problem. Mm. But luckily they've compensated with the uh, the biggest man that they could find. Mm. Speaking of finding, Rebecca Ferguson is such a good find for this series. Agreed, yes. My goodness. As a, I don't know if it's a counterpoint, but as an equal to Ethan Hunt, mm. it's just it's just all there. That's you right. Know? Mm. Love that. Much better than his wife. Yeah. Come on. She sucks. She's killed like two guys in her whole life. Two guys. Come on, Rebecca Ferguson's probably killed hundreds of guys. Probably. Probably while they were enjoying a can of soup. (laughs) Bang. (laughs) Face down in the soup. That's a movie. That is a movie. (laughs) But you're absolutely right. She's got the the skills. Yep. She's got the... The yellow dress. She's got the yellow dress. I feel like that's a, that's like an iconic spy look. She's got a gun in a in a banister. Yeah, a gun in a whatever, banister. Whatever, whatever that. Mm-hmm. Safety rail. Yeah, I huh? think it's a trombone. Yeah. Yeah, really great. And I love that there's, you know, some tech in this that maybe isn't super over the top, but we haven't seen it before. He's got new weird underwater goggles. That's true. That's good. He drives a motor car. He does drive a motor car. He, uh, he has an oxygen glove that... Like a, it's like a video game. Yeah. <laughs> you know, life health meter. That's true. Telling him when he's going to die. You know when you're going to die. You don't need to look at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get a sense about it, you know? You get a sense about it. He's got a glass disintegrating thing. That's goes, true. Pfft. What have we seen that in before? It's James a, Bond. Yeah, it's on a ring, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just can't believe he stole it from James Bond. Mm. Unbelievable. After all the thieving James Bond has done over the years. <laughs> and watching this, there's a few things that really struck me compared to, say, like... The Fast and Furious franchise. Go on. Um, you know what? Because I think, honestly, the Fast and Furious franchise and Mission Impossible do share some elements. Yeah. But I think Mission Impossible... And maybe cast members. Yeah, yeah. I and maybe know. And maybe like MacGuffins. Yeah. Oh, there's a chip with a list. Is that laser going to bounce off the moon and hit the president? I <laughs> hope not. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Actual line of dialogue from Fast and Furious 1, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> But there's a moment in this where they have a car chase mm-hmm. through an exotic locale, oh, yes. similarly to Fast X. Mm. And these things are night and day. And I'm not talking about the Tom Cruise, Cameron Diaz action thriller, can night and day. That's right. I'm talking about the comparisons mm. here. I know there are some sequences that would have to be CGI'd, like that car flip or whatever. Right, right, right. But so much of it is real. Side note. <laughs> yeah. 
Do you think, you know, because I, th- I think in America it's not required you always wear your seatbelt. Does that depending on the state or whatever. Yeah, 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 but does that mean that some Americans think that if you put your seatbelt on you can survive a car flipping ten times over and over? Yes. That, okay. And it's true. Simon Pegg <laughs> should know that also. Yeah. He's a British man. That's exactly Maybe right. that's why he's like, mm. what am I even doing this for? Yeah, yeah. But the, you're absolutely right. The, the action, the chase sequences in these movies feel real and terrifying. The motorcycle chase, when... Oh, he's when, in his element. When Ethan has just had a heart attack and brought, has been brought back to life, and he's like, you know what would be fun? And, and he's already done a car chase. He's like, you know what would be fun after... You know, a little... Um, also, his heart had just restarted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what a little, you know, a little, uh, little, um, uh, little after-dinner mint would be? Motorcycle chase. Oh, my goodness. And, and that that is terrifying. Yeah, really good stuff. Mm. Because also, he's doing it for real, and he's just, like, in a weird shirt. <laughs> you know, right, yeah. you come off that whether you're in a movie or not, your whole skin is gone. Yeah. You're shucked like a cob of corn. Or you're wearing that shirt in your coffin because it's been <laughs> welded to your body. <laughs> oh, snake skin. Interesting joke yeah. for a funeral. Well, I guess he does come off the bike, doesn't he? Because she knows his weakness. Standing in the middle of the road and you have to be a person that he sort of likes or trusts, That's sort true. of. Mm-hmm. You know? He's not willing to, to do that. That's right. Which I appreciate. I've got a note here that just says. Fuck the Brits in all caps. And I don't know what that is <laughs> okay. in reference to. Presumably Rebecca Ferguson's boss. Uh, I like that actor. Uh, I don't know. Is it because, well, my my first thought was like, uh, you know, the IMF is like, oh my God, the syndicate, they're going to kidnap the prime minister. And as a as a, a person in a nation. Who we, has kidnapped the prime minister. Exactly. And, and in a nation, uh, we have a prime minister. My first thought was, who cares? <laughs> Whatever, just replace him. I don't be care. another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're gonna butcher those yeah. dudes. They all look the same. It's exactly. fine. Exactly. Just drown him in a, <laughs> drown him in the ocean and name a pool after him. It's yep. fine. And then we'll get. Well, the next guy can move one to the left, and he can be the prime minister now. Now that's not a hypothetical thing, is it? No, that's a thing that happened in this country. To Harold Holt, yes. <laughs> I love that scene at the end, though. It's very tense, and they're all in a room, and they're like. Ethan Hunt is coming. He's going to do a big mission. Mm. He is the sun. <laughs> yeah. He is the sun and the moon. <laughs> he is the beginning and ending of the universe itself. He might be shooting a laser and bouncing it off the moon to kill the British Prime Minister, we right. suspect. Mm. And I'd forgotten which one he was in that room. <laughs> uh-huh. But I knew he was in the room and I'm looking at him like, he could be Alec Baldwin, but mm. Alec Baldwin is doing the speech. And that would be weird if... Yeah. Like he was th- and, and Ethan Hunt is super cool. Yep. And he's actually very... He's taller than you'd think. And also... He doesn't uh, need to wear stilts when he's impersonating Alec Baldwin. That's exactly right. <laughs> no, it was me. <laughs> and then it was the guy. Yeah, that? it was the other guy. Yeah, really good yeah, stuff. Yeah. Loved all that. I also liked at the end how they just trapped the villain in the box. I'm going to put you in a box. Yeah, and then kick the box over. Like that's a cool. rat. Yeah, got him. Yeah. Nice. Nobody had tried that before, had they? No. On this international super spy, they tried to trace his financials or track him down through a series of international arms deals or whatever. Now trap him in a box. Or beat him up. Wait wait till he goes to the shops and then trap him in a box. <laughs> yeah. They got him. They got him good, mate. Yeah. But I think he's going to get out of that box, though. Are you reckon? Yeah, no, sooner rather than later, yeah. So I guess the question is, and it's becoming redundant at this point, does he go... Yes. <laughs> does he go rogue? Oh, yes. Also that. <laughs> But they make him go rogue, to be fair. Mm. I mean, they always make him go rogue, I guess. Uh, he could retire. Yeah, but they shut it down and oh, well. I don't know. Okay, well, that's the question then. Is he still technically going rogue if his organisation has been shut down? Well, he grows that beard. So what does that tell you? Oh, then yes, absolutely. Mm. Remember that bit they thought he was in that room? It was in a different room. <laughs> it's a different freaking room. Did you man. think he was in that room? I did. Yeah. I mean, I'd seen it before, but still. <laughs> what about the hair? What about the hair situation? Talking, Speaking of things you know we what? come I back to. I thought it was quite versatile. Me you too. Know what? It had a good good, good swoop to the had fringe. Had a flop to it. Had a flop to it. It looked good in the action sequences, but when he goes to the opera, makes it look real nice. Exactly. It was a good, good, lay, good level for him. You can't do that with a Mission Impossible 2 slash 4 hair. That's true, and you can't do it with a Mission Impossible 1 too militaristic, you know We've what I mean? We've talked about that, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. Fresh out of the military. That's what was right. he thinking with oh that haircut? Oh my god, embarrassing. He looks like a Lego man. You could set your fucking watch to that haircut, mate. That's right. Disgusting. Mm, but you couldn't play a bassoon to it, could you? <laughs> no. Mm. Anyways, Mason, it's trivia. Mission Impossible. That's in Cruisable Edition. I love that. These are all the things that I found in Cruisable about Tom Cruise. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, so... I've just compiled them into this one section. Okay, I'm Supposed ready to, to dis- I'm ready to disagree, but I don't think I will. Sometimes they might be say organically spread across the video. Mm. Not this time, Mason. Oh yeah. Yeah. Also brought to you by Halo 5. 
Did you know? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's, in the, it's in the movie. Oh, it is too. Is it now? Halo Three, I think. No, is it? Halo Three's from like two thousand seven oh, or whatever. Also, like in that scene, Benji's got a little mirror set up, so if somebody comes down the hall, they're like, you can switch off his Halo Five. You're saying you should have had a mirrored hallway situation. I think he should have requested a different office. <laughs> but but also, like by the time you see, he's not a very good agent. By the time some, you nah. see somebody in that mirror, they've clocked you already. You have a three monitor set up, and you're playing Halo on it. True. Come on, man. I mean, he's getting his work done, and that's what's important. It's true. You know? Mm. That's what I think the problem... He's got time to Halo. He's got time to Halo jump out of a plane. Mission Impossible Fallout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I understand That's that. the expression in the IMF. That... Yeah. <laughs> so apparently Tom Cruise uh, learned to hold his breath for six minutes, which ended up extending the length of the stunt, because they were like, how long can you do it? And he's like, I don't know, six minutes? And they're like, okay, I guess we'll make this sequence six minutes. <laughs> Initially, they would have been like, okay, well, how about, how about you, you, you finish the stunt and then you just sit around in the water for an extra two minutes? And he's like, mm, could you extend the... I look a bit silly. Got hit by a, hit by a big CGI arm. Oh yeah, that could work. Then I keep doing some swimming. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, the stunt coordinator apparently told Simon Pegg that Tom Cruise was doing all the driving because he didn't have a better driver than him. Wow. I bet that was Tom Cruise with a mustache. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> this isn't Tom Cruise related, but it's in here. It's it's snuck in. But here we go. This is the first Mission Impossible film not to feature the jump and hang scene. Oh right, interesting. Pretty incruisable. That is incruisable. Because I can't. It's hard to. I'm pretty incruised that it's not in here. Yeah, I understand. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and apparently the big air stunt mm -hmm. that was five thousand feet in the air. Okay. Insane thing to do. Apparently it took him like a couple of days for his body temperature to come back to normal. Okay. He had to wear special contacts which covered his entire eyeballs. Those are called glasses, but all right. Are they? Yeah. Okay. Well, they're special. <laughs> Okay. I saw it behind they the scenes. Special. They said it was special. I think they're probably just clear frames. They probably got them. No over. contacts. They go <laughs> over his eyeballs. They're not. They're, that, that sounds like glasses. They're not glasses. Oh, they right. stick to his eyeballs. Interesting. This video, there's footage of it. I can't believe you. And apparently they did it eight times, and they had to do it like at a very specific time of day because you know you need a certain amount of light and etc. Mm. and blah blah blah. You know. Also, mm. he nearly fell out the back. He went and he nearly fell at the back. That's true, yeah. That's a mistake they nearly made in this movie. I God, I hate mistakes in movies, Mason. What a goose They make bloke. me so yeah, mad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, you ready for a big stunt? Yeah. I was under one that whole time. That's a record, probably. That's a world record. What do you think of that? I mean, that's bold. <laughs> Yeah. It's just a lot of people could swear never to watch one of these videos ever again. So I, that's I quite dangerous. I dare them not to. Wow. I dare them to sit through all of this dreck and then never come back. <laughs> oh, yes. I dare you. Wow. <laughs> Anyways, box office. On a budget of $150 million, this took home in the international market $682.7 million, which is slightly below four, but still a very good number. Bearing in mind, though, this came in behind Star Wars Episode 7, Jurassic World, Furious 7, Age of Ultron, Minions, Spectre, Inside Out. And what's interesting about all of those brands, except for probably Minions, uh -huh. a lot of people have lost faith in those. Oh, like now? Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Whereas Mission Impossible, people are just... They're raring to go. They're raring to go. Because it's a movie, go it's a big movie going experience you've seen at the movies and Tom Cruise will not allow it to go onto streaming in 45 days or whatever it is. That's right. And if you watch it at home, even in the allotted window, there's a good chance he could come to your house and kill you. That's right. He'll come out of that motion smoothing. he just <laughs> slurp his way out of it and he'll get you. <laughs> you can do that, you know. Absolutely. Anyways, come back next week for Mission Impossible. They fight in the bathroom. Oh, my God. That's one of my favourites. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's a good one, isn't it? Oh, Henry Cavill's going to reload his arms and his moustache yeah. is going to spring out. <laughs> his moustache has oh got to Oh, my open. God. This is it. This is the reverse Justice League. This is the other side of that coin. Oh, yeah. Of the weird CGI face that he had in Justice League because he would, because oh Paramount God, wouldn't yeah. let him shave the moustache. Oh, my God. It's incredible. It's come full circle. It really has. Mm. And maybe people want to see that early. Of course they do. Yeah. Because uh, they're, they're still here, yep. I think. <laughs> even, though I, even though I threatened them. You threatened them. <laughs> uh, you can actually head over to bigsandwich.co, which is like our private Patreon, where if you sign up there, these always go up early. That's right. And in addition to that, there are thousands of hours of bonus exclusive content, including movie commentaries, video game Let's Plays, bonus podcasts, and our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows that comes out every Monday. That actually comes out there. On Sunday as opposed to Monday. Is it really thousands of hours? Yeah, probably. It's too many.
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, says a lot about us, I think. I think it does. And the amount of free time we have. I agree. Yeah. Anyways, thanks, everybody. Wow. Bang up job. I agree. Let's grab that, Jimmy, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.